Perspective Shift 1. On July 25, 2234, they discovered the anomaly. It was ship night inside the SLV Atamora, and all the lights were off or else dimmed and set to red to avoid disrupting the crew's circadian rhythm. The halls and rooms of the vessel were hushed, but not silent. Life support fans provided a constant background hum, lulling white noise that soon faded from notice. Outside the Atamora, the sand-colored gas giant Samson receded into the black backdrop of space. 2. The ship's lab was cramped. Equipment encroached from the walls, filled the center, leaving narrow walkways in between. Here it was warm from the computers, and the air had a thick, stifling quality. Numerous tiny indicators gave the impression of constellations scattered across the dark pieces of machinery. Alex Crichton sat at the hollow display crammed into one corner, trying to read the results from the probe they'd dropped into Samson's atmosphere the previous day. Carbon, ammonia, methane, the list blurred before his eyes. It was well past midnight, but he still hadn't written his report, and the captain was expecting it first thing in the morning. The smart thing would have been to write the report that afternoon, when he was still somewhat alert. That would have been the smart thing. Alex knew it. But he hadn't been able to bring himself to type a single word. Like most days, he felt little to no motivation during waking hours. It wasn't much better at night. An occasional spurt of panic would result in a brief run of productivity. But even then, the work he produced wasn't very good. He was too sleep-deprived. And Alex didn't want to take a wake-me-up pill like Stimware. What was the point? To feel better? That wasn't going to happen. As long as he could keep Captain Idris from chewing him out again, he didn't care to do more. None of it really mattered, after all. Not to Alex. The hollow swam before him. Numbers floating disconnected from their background. Alex blinked. It didn't help. Frustrated and not having the strength to deal with the frustration, he crossed his arms on the plastic desk and rested his head on them. A shock of black hair fell across his forehead, cutting off his vision. How long had it been since he got it trimmed? Three months? Four? It had been some time before. That much he was sure of. He buried his face in the crook of his elbow, and for a long while, the hum of the fans was the only sound in the lab.